right, let's go ahead and jump into the range review. Oh my God, look at this. I'm kind of proud of myself on this one. This thing fits like a glove. I think I'm gonna have to buy one. <laughs> Hey everybody, thank you for joining us today on the Concealed Carry channel. I'm Grant McLean. We got an awesome review lined up for you for an HK VP9. Pretty sweet gun. Super excited to share this info with you. Anyways, before we jump into this, I want to say thank you so much to the folks over at Northwest Armory hooking me up, making sure I get those guns, get down to the range, come back with good info for you guys. That way, if you're looking at this gun, hopefully this information will help you make a well-educated decision. So, if you need to order a gun, visit nwarmory.com, order up your gun there, have it shipped to your local FFL, or if you happen to go into the store, tell them that Grant McLean over at the Concealed Carry channel sent you in, and they're of course going to take good care of you and say hi to Khaki because he's such a good boy. The other folks I want to say thank you so much too is X Hunt Targets, another one of our big sponsors of the channel. We use their reactive targets on the channel and they are awesome. So visit xhunttargets.com, order up some targets from them after you watch this video. You're going to be super happy you did. And I want to say thank you to our Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel in any way you can, we'd greatly appreciate it. As you know, guns, ammo, and range time all cost money. You can go down into the description. It's the top link to our Patreon. It's going to give you exclusive content plus entries into drawings for prizes from yours truly. Really good ones too. And of course it helps us and we thank you guys so much for supporting the channel as we do want to make this a full-time gig. Of course, make sure to hit that like if you support concealed carry gun owners, you are a concealed carry gun owner, you support the ability for people to defend themselves, hit the like, comment below, get us up high in those rankings of YouTube, that way people can find good information. Of course, if you're not a subscriber already, go ahead and hit that subscribe and share the channel with your friends, family, and other gun enthusiasts. Let's go ahead and jump into the unboxing portion of this. So if you're to go to the store, you're to buy this gun, it's going to come in a nice plastic case. You can definitely run a lock through this case. Let's go ahead and unbox that. There she is. Underneath the foam, you're going to find your lock manual sticker. Going to have that sticker. And it also comes with this, which is kind of cool. Inside here, you have replacement little pads for the magazine release, but they're also different sizes. And you have the tool as well. So if you wanted to make this larger, or you need to say it wore down for whatever reason, which I can't foresee that happening. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess anything is possible, right? But you have replacements and larger sizes to kind of accommodate. So the other uh, thing we're gonna find here is the VP9. There it is, awesome. Let's jump into the specs here in a second and go over the rest of the stuff. You get an extra 17 round magazine. You get a loader, couple sets of replacement side panels. This way you can choose how big you want the grip, kind of cater it to your hand, customize that. And then you also will have a couple back straps in there. And I'll show you as we go over the grip portion of this, how those go on, very simple. That's pretty awesome. I haven't seen that with other guns where you can replace the vertical side panel, the back strap, and change out the size of the magazine release. That's pretty darn custom as far as that goes, which, hey, that, that's pretty sweet. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the specs of this real quick. So as you know, it's an HK VP9. This one's chambered in nine millimeter, double stack, nine mil, 17 rounds in this magazine. Holds quite a bit. You do get two of those magazines as well. The barrel on this is the same length barrel as you'd find on a Glock 19, 4.09 inches. To me, this is very reminiscent of the Glock 45, kind of that compact size barrel with a full-size frame. 
Overall length is 7.3 inches, height is 5.4 inches, and the width is 1.3 inches. So not a super big gun as far as width goes, but it's pretty much the whole thing is very wide all the way through. So it does give you some nice surface area into your hand and concealability could be, well, I'd say it's not for everybody because this is a pretty wide gun. Weight is one pound, 9.6 ounces, and we have a MSRP of 789 bucks. During the gun pandemic right now, I have seen them definitely sell for MSRP, some a little bit more, but usually you're gonna see them sell for about, uh, I would say about $100 less than that. Uh, as you would see most guns selling for about 100, maybe 150 even in some cases, less than what they're selling for right now during the gun pandemic of 2020, 2021. <laughs> Supply and demand, baby. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the range review. Oh my God, look at this. I'm kind of proud of myself on this one. We did our usual three, five, seven, and 10 yards. And what we're doing, or at least our goal is to do five shots in two seconds. And I'll tell you, this gun from the factory is a fast, flat shooting gun. It looks good, feels good, and it shoots really good. The three yards was a 1.5 inch group. The five yards was a 1.8 inch group. This is four shots and that's the fifth right there. Seven yards, two inch group, and 10 yards, 2.1 inch group. These are some fantastic groups. I must say I'm very proud of myself on this one. The gun shoots super flat, smooth. You can really get a nice grip onto this gun as well. This thing is so easy to shoot, it's crazy. I know some people don't necessarily care for the finger grooves. You'll see that with like previous generation of Glocks where they'll shave them off. I get it. It's not going to fit everybody's hand, but for me, this thing fits like a glove. It's almost like if I grabbed like a piece of putty and I just squished my hand into it. That's what this grip ended up like. And I have the grip portion, the magazine release. We'll talk about that here in a second. We're going to start from the top. Start with the sights and then we'll go down to the magazine and just kind of show you some of the feature benefits and things that I would, you know, take a look for and consider if I was buying this gun. First thing here is we have the sights and these sights are kind of unique. They're not tritium sights, but they are glow in the dark. So I'll show you here real quick. You can see them right now. They're not really glowing. They're very easy to see in regular light and kind of semi low light but they do need to charge from some alternate source of light. And even if you charge them with light, you'll, you'll see how bright these things get. So look at that. See how much lighter, brighter those are? You're still gonna be able to see them. So if you have this in like a safe or something like that and it's not being able to charge per se, you're still gonna be able to pick them up. It's a three dot sight and it's almost whitish. And then, I mean, when these things charge, holy cow, uh, you can really pick them up. So very cool. I like the sights. They are a dovetail style sight. They're very easy to replace if you needed to. They do make different styles, almost like trim levels of this gun. So they make a tactical version. They make this gun with an optic plate. There's quite a few different models. HK's website is, at least I found, not the easiest to navigate and find those item numbers that you'd be searching for online, like, hey, I want this specific model number. I mean, heck, they make one that comes with a Crimson Trace laser, and that's not even mentioned on the website. It comes from the factory with a Crimson Trace laser. It's not even mentioned on there. It can be a little difficult to, to find those things, so one of the best things I could recommend is to either email or call or even just go into your local gun shop and see which model it is that they have. Because I myself had a, a bit of trouble tracking down you know, those specifics so I could tell you the different types of uh, options you'd have. So there's the tactical model, <laughs> which is gonna have the threaded barrel, an optic cut for a red dot, and then raised suppressor height sights. Then you have the Crimson Trace model, which is identical to this, except for it'll come with a Crimson Trace laser that you can attach to it. Then it has the other model, 
which will have the optic cut on here. And all of those are going to be a higher MSRP than what you see here today of this one being at 789 bucks. Obviously, more stuff, more money. Let's go ahead and jump into the slide. I really like this slide. This may in fact actually be one of my favorite slides. The front serrations are awesome. They're very easy to get a hold of and manipulate. The rear serrations, I like those. And I really like the Shield EZ 9mm slide, uh, the rear serrations, because it has this kind of little lip to it at the very end. And uh, you can't really compare that to this per se, but in this respect you can, and it has that little lip at the end so you get that extra little grip that I really like. So the slide overall, I am a big fan of this. There's the little ejector here, and it has a little bit of red paint on it. And it would make you think that maybe it's more so kind of like a loaded chamber indicator. So that way as the as the slide goes forward and it grabs on to the back of the shell and that would stick out, it doesn't really do that. It, I was kind of disappointed. I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. It, it doesn't really, you know, it, it doesn't really stick out and go, hey, there's a bullet in the chamber. I would not rely on that to tell you that there is a bullet in the chamber. I would still do a quick little press check because in my mind, it it comes out a itty bitty tiny bit. And just going like this, I don't know that most people would be able to tell whether that is sticking out or not. So in my mind, don't count on that as far as being a good clarifying statement of whether or not you have a bullet in the chamber. I would still do a press check, which I'm used to. So if you're used to that, who cares? Don't even take that into factor of it's not a make or break decision for you. On the back of the slide, you're gonna see a small little hole in the back of the slide and you'll see a little red indicator. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that is to let you know that the gun is has been cocked back. Uh, even though this is a striker fire pistol, you still have a mechanism in there that's gonna be towards the rear of the gun. And when you pull the trigger, you'll see that's just gonna go ahead and disappear and go forward. That's an easy way for you to see that the gun essentially is cocked back. Super simple. But other than that, the machining's great. The coating is nice, even, looks very good. All of it, I like a lot. Let's go ahead and jump into the controls here. So right here we have your slide lock release, which on this model is nice because a slide lock release is ambidextrous from the factory. It doesn't stick out very far, but similar to the Walther PPQ, it's fairly wide. So it's easy to manipulate that slide lock release. I wouldn't, like most times, count on using that to send the slide home after you load in another round. However, it is easy to manipulate the gun in that way. I still recommend to, of course, slingshot that slide back and let her fly. The takedown lever, complements that slide lock release very well. It's not very big, but again, it's very easy to get a hold of and manipulate that. Like it very much. Uh, let's talk about this mag release. So with the mag release, it is a little, it's just a little too far for me to reach that mag release without having to adjust my grip, just a tiny bit too far. Now, like I've said in other reviews that I've done, I am, pretty much just used to this at, at this point. And I feel like most people with medium size or even small size hands, it's just something that's gonna happen if you wanna have a double stack magazine minus the Mossberg MC2C, which is like thin. It's like Glock 48, Glock 43 thin. Um, but the magazine release, I do really like this. I have, I have used the paddle style release and it definitely takes some get, getting used to so if, if you don't know what i'm talking about they make the u.s style of push button mag release and that's typically what you're going to see on all u.s pistols is a mag release here that is reversible for lefties 
And then you'll have more of the European style magazines, and you'll see these on some Walters as well. It, it's they're not as popular, you know. Actually, it's kind of hard to find them these days. But in the trigger guard will be a little paddle, and essentially you push that paddle down, the mag drops out. That's how it works. Some people will use their trigger finger to manipulate that paddle, and some will use their thumb of their support hand. So as they're shooting, boom, boom, boom. They'll drop that down, bam, mag drops, reload, okay? So mag drop, reload, and they'll use that there. I do know some folks, as they've been getting used to that paddle style, have accidentally hit that paddle style because they're, they're just not used to something being there that actually moves, and it just, you know, it, it's an accident. So if you decide to go with the paddle style. Be patient with yourself. I would highly recommend uh, use some snap caps, you know, just practice, 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 turn on your TV show and just practice with that paddle style. It is efficient if you're good at it, just like most things, you know, if you, if you practice. But other than that, I would say if you go to the store and you're considering this gun and you like the feel of it, but mag maybe that magazine release is just a little too far out of your hand, have the the salesperson go get the box, start taking out, and, and uh, take out some of these grip pieces. So on the back here, you have your back strap, and this is held in by this pin, so you'll just push that pin out and you have different sizes. So this is gonna be the large, and what we have on there right now is the medium. So here's a small. You can adjust that down, and then you can also adjust these vertical panels down as well, where it's kind of like a palm swell in a certain way. You can adjust all of that, which is very cool. HK says you have about 27 different configurations you can play around with that. I think, you know, you're not really going to play around with it much. You're going to find out what works for you, stick with that, throw the rest of the stuff in the box, and just kind of keep it there. But it is certainly nice that you have those options as far as that goes, especially if you love the finger grooves. I do really like the finger grooves, but I understand that some people are not going to like them simply because these finger grooves will not fit everybody's hands. Let's go over to the trigger. Now, the trigger is, is a slightly curved trigger. It's very similar in design to, say, a Glock. You have your trigger safety in the center. Now, I was not a big fan of this trigger when I first got to feel it. Then, when I put rounds down range on it, I could, I could give a shit less. This is a great trigger. It reminds me very much of the PPQ trigger. Smooth. It does have a lot of take up. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do some uh, do some trigger pulls here. So you have a lot of take up as you can see there, and you hit the wall. It's about a five and a pound, five and a half pound trigger, and then break. Now that I didn't mind so much. Whatever, a lot of take up, hit the wall, break. Love that. What it was that I wasn't a big fan of was the reset, and and I'll show you why. So on the reset. It is audible, you can feel it as well, but it's a kind of a longer reset. There it goes. That's, I, I shouldn't say longer, it's more like a medium reset. But here's the thing that I didn't like is you have more uptake, you, you got more take up there before you hit the wall at the reset. It's not like when you reset, you're at the wall and you can just pull. There's more take up. And I wasn't necessarily a fan of it. I was like, hmm, all right, we'll have to see how this how, how this works at the range, you know, because I'm used to most of my guns. Reset is right at the wall, bam, reset, bam, right at the wall, which is what I'm used to. I'm not used to having more take up, you know. Do I need to explain anything more? Yeah. Nope. Didn't think so. Anyways, with the frame, the frame has the awesome pick rail there, so you can put every single attachment you'd want to. On the front of that, you have some serrations here in the front of the trigger guard, which is very nice. 
The trigger guard, I would like it if it went up a bit more on that undercut because I do like to get my hand, of course, as high as I possibly can, but it is not bad. And I like that this trigger guard is fairly thin. I keep saying this, I know I love the finger grooves and I love the, the grip on this. I would say this is as comfortable, if not more comfortable, definitely better looking as far as the grip goes than the Walther PPQ because that one does look like a woven basket from my grandmother's house and this does not. <laughs> Anyways, so like I already touched on the, the grip portions there that you can remove and replace and kind of modify that to cater to your hand, fantastic. Magazine wise, uh, magazine feeds in beautifully, doesn't get stuck in the magwell or anything like that. I do have to move my hand slightly out of its firing position to manipulate that magazine release, but if you have medium or small size hands, I would recommend talk to the associate at the gun store, tell them go get these replacement panels, put on all the smallest ones, and then judge the gun from there. It's not a super expensive gun, but is definitely one of those guns that you have the ability to keep for a very long time and grow into very, very well. And I think you will be very happy with this. It would be really sad for you to love everything about the gun and not get to experience those, uh, those panels, what it would be like if it was actually more so fitted to your hand. But other than that, if I move my thumb just slightly, beautiful. The bottom here of the Magwell, it, it's not flared or anything super special in that regard, but I think that if you were doing a fast reload, uh, I would recommend a flared Magwell for this, but for what it is and being smaller for concealed carry, I think that this functions very well. On the back side here, you also can put a lanyard or something like that on there if you want to go Boondock Saint style or something silly. But hey, that's up to you. Overall, uh, you guys, I really like this gun. It's more than you would find like your Smith and Wessons are going to be and your Glocks are going to be not too terribly much more than uh, than those right now because these tend to not dip down into like that $500 range. If that's the case and you want a HK, look at like the P30. Look at that gun. But the VP9, I feel that you're paying a little bit more, but you're also getting a bit more. And the shootability and comfort in shooting this gun is superb, let alone the cool factor that John Wick used at HK in, in the first movie, which is sick. So anyways, um, I would love to hear from you guys. Do you own one? Do you not? Did you consider it? Did you go with something else? What did you do? Do you like this gun or not? And what would you say to other folks that are looking for a gun and considering this gun? So comment below, let's hear it out because you know that's what the channel's all about. Make sure to hit that like. If you support the fact that people are able to, to defend themselves with a gun, hit that thumbs up. Of course, comment you know your thoughts on that below and make sure to share the channel with your friends, family, and other enthusiasts. If you do need to get a gun like this or just a gun in general, go to nwarmory.com. The folks over at Northwest Armory have been awesome to us. Let's be awesome to them. Go to nwarmory.com, buy the gun, have it shipped to your local FFL, or if you're local in the Northwest area, you can go down to the store, pick it up yourself, go in, tell them that Grant over the Concealed Carry channel sent you in, say hi to Khaki, he's a good boy. Of course, make sure to, uh, let's make sure to take care of our friends over at Exxon Targets, exxontargets.com. They have been awesome to us. So order up some targets from them. And I think you're going to be super happy, especially in the fall or winter time here. These targets are weatherproof, so they're perfect for outdoor shooting. And go down into the description, click on our Patreon link. You know, however you can support the channel would be greatly appreciated. We want to do this full time and bring you guys great content. So big thumbs up to our Patreon supporters that are already supporting us. Without you guys, we, uh, we wouldn't be able to make this a full time thing and move in that direction. So. Anyways, I'm very excited to share some other stuff 
with you guys. As you can see behind me, we have some Sig Sauer FCUs. We have some FNs. We have some awesome stuff coming in the future, and I can't wait to share that with you. So we will see you next time here on the Conceal Carry channel. Hey everybody, welcome for, oh my God, welcome for, <laughs> welcome for joining us today. Oh God, the blooper reel's already starting. I just turned the camera on. You roll. This is exactly how I roll, how I don't expect to roll. Uh, the other folks I want to say so much, uh, say, <laughs> you support the, uh, use her. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the specs of this gun. So it, it's an HK, oh my God, f Put that on silent, okay.